Hey guys, Eddie here at HypeStore.com. Today we're going to be talking about cleaning and maintaining your generator's carburetor. Generators often sit for long periods of time without running, as they are often only used when needed. Unfortunately, this means that they can be hard to start when they are needed most. Most often, this is because of old fuel in the carburetor. Though it may seem daunting, cleaning a gunked up carburetor is not that difficult. But first, let me give you a tip. When storing your generator for long periods, before you put it away, start the machine and then turn the fuel tap off and let it run until it dies. This will help remove much of the remaining fuel in the carburetor. This particular machine was left in that state and you will see that the carburetor is actually in good condition. But if yours looks like this, then this video will help you out. To do a thorough cleaning, it is necessary to remove the carburetor. Now all machines will have slight differences, but generally this generator will represent a very typical configuration. Before you begin, you may want to drain the carburetor or even examine the float bowl to see what condition your carb is in. There will usually be a drain plug on the bottom of the carb, but if not, the float bowl retaining bolt can be removed. You can then remove the float bowl to drain and inspect it. Now I do recommend reinstalling the float bowl before beginning the carb removal, as it will prevent damage to the float. To remove the carburetor, we will begin by removing the air box and its air tube. On this machine, we will also need to remove the plastic cover panel. After finding all the retaining bolts and nuts, we'll remove the box and panel to reveal the carburetor itself. You'll then want to locate the connecting linkages. In this case, we have a choke lever that is connected directly to the carburetor and a long throttle linkage rod connected to the governor. We will need to remove the throttle linkage and its small spring. Pay attention here and take pictures of its position and how it comes off and on. Many, like this one, will disconnect at the governor lever first by twisting the bent part of the lever to release it from its socket. Then the rest will come off with the carburetor. We'll also need to remove this bolt, which holds the choke bracket. Of course, we'll also need to remove the fuel line here. Once this is done, the carburetor can then be slipped off. The choke lever and throttle linkage rod can then be completely removed, and the carb is now ready for cleaning. If you're not going to be reinstalling the carb right away, block the intake opening by stuffing a rag in the intake hole. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this video, and if you are, please consider giving us a thumbs up, commenting below, and subscribing to the channel. We'll have more great videos every week. So once again, I'll say, if you're a novice, I encourage you to take pictures at every step of this process. It may save you some time and aggravation. Once we get in the carburetor, there's gonna be a lot of small pieces, and you may find it easier to work on a soft, light colored cloth, like a towel. This will make parts easy to see and prevent a part from bouncing off a hard table and across the room if you accidentally drop something. Before we disassemble the carburetor, it's a good idea to do a bit of cleaning on the outside. For this and the rest of the cleaning, we recommend a good quality carb spray. The outside does not have to be hospital clean. Try to remove as much debris as possible to prevent dirt and other matter from getting inside the carb as you take it apart. It is also a good time to examine the outside for any damage like a bent linkage. Now we can remove the bowl and float. Inspect the bowl gasket. It may be reused if it's in good condition. The float is usually held in by a straight pin. This pin may just fall out or it may need to be lightly pressed or even tapped out. Check that it is straight after you remove it. Before removing the float, notice the small piece that is attached to it. This is the float needle. It along with the float controls the amount of fuel in the bowl. Remove the two pieces after you are confident how it will go back together or take a picture. Now we're gonna identify our main jet and nozzle. These are located in the center post. On this carb, the main jet is on the side of the post. Another common position is in the center hole. We'll remove this and place it to the side for now. A note of caution when removing these pieces, which are often brass, use a tight fitting screwdriver and brace the part well when removing. They can often be tight and are easy to round over as we will see in a minute. The next piece to come out will be the nozzle or emulsion tube. If your main jet is inside the post, the nozzle may just fall out or be pressed out with light force, but they can also be screwed in separately. When the main jet is on the outside of the post, the nozzle will likely be screwed in. In this case, someone has been into this carburetor before and rounded over the screwdriver slot, so special care will need to be taken to get it out. And if you run into this, you may want to replace this part. You may also find another jet beside the post inside. This model doesn't have that, but it does have a removable pilot jet on the outside of the carburetor. These are all removed the same way. The next part will be the idle mixture screw. On this model, it is under the limiting cap. Make sure you take a picture of this so you can get it reinstalled correctly. Gently pry off the cap to access the needle screw. This will be the only piece that we'll need to adjust after reinstalling, so let's see what position it is now. Go ahead and screw it in, counting the number of revolutions it takes until it goes tight. It will most often be one and a half turns as it is here. When we reinstall it, we will screw it all the way in and then turn it back out the amount that we count. One and a half turns in this case. Now at this point we could go further by doing things like removing the butterflies or the welch plugs. 
but in most cases, this is not necessary unless doing a complete rebuild or doing a carb dip. On this carb, we're just gonna do a functional cleaning, but do check that the butterflies move freely and do not bind up. Now that we have it apart, let's start cleaning. Spray the carb body down and wipe clean. Anywhere we removed apart, spray into that port. Do this carefully as the spray will leave at a different part of the carburetor. All ports should be clear and the spray should exit somewhere else on the carb. The carb cleaning brush works well here in the larger ports. Hypo sells a complete carb cleaning and adjustment kit at hypostore.com. It has the necessary brushes and the cleaning needles which will be used on the smaller parts in just a second. Now it's time to move on to the jets and other parts. Spray through them, make sure they're clear. If necessary, use the appropriately sized cleaning needles to dislodge any debris. Inspect the tips of the needles for damage or wear and replace them if necessary. If you have access to compressed air or an air can, it can be used to dry and blow the remaining cleaner out of your part. Take your time here, do a thorough job, and once you are happy with it, it's time to put it all back together. Reinstall the jets, carefully make sure that they're tight, reinstall the idle screw, making the adjustment we talked about earlier, and reinstall the limiting cap. After putting the float and needle back in, hold the needle down and blow through the fuel inlet. It should be restricted. Then you can let go of the needle and air should flow through. Then turn the carb upside down and look at the float. It should sit roughly flat to the flange where the edges of the float will sit. And it should fall when turned right side up. The rest of the installation is just a reverse of removal. At each step, just make sure everything is working normally. And once you're done, open the fuel tap and let the float bowl fill up and check for leaks. And then start it up. You may need to make some fine adjustments to the idle but at this point, you should have a good working carburetor. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel where we're going to have more videos like these coming in the future. And also join us at Hype at DIY Community Facebook group. It's a great place to meet other people who are interested in DIY repair, as well as get instruction for something, get advice, or just talk to uh, Hype at customer service. Check us out at hypastore.com. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.